and that is with the voice of the people reigning preeminent each and every day. So I, I, uh, I, I just, I need to share from my heart just briefly. I'm going to open it up to some questions and answers, but I want to, I want to share that what you are doing as Sentinels makes an unbelievable difference. Now, there are some members of Congress of whom you're supposed to lobby. <laughs> now, the difference is, is I love my Sentinels from North Carolina. We talk on a regular basis. We know them by name, don't we? And, uh, you know, it's a fascinating thing when you vote the way that the people back home want you to vote. You don't ever have a problem. <laughs> what a novel concept. So here I am to ask you to encourage you this day to make sure that if your member of Congress is not listening to you, that you do what Ronald Reagan has always said. If you can't make them see the light, they need to feel the heat. Right? I'm a big Second Amendment guy. I love, I love my guns. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can tell you do too. You're from Texas. You better love your guns. All right. So, so, you know, it was interesting. My first comms director, we didn't necessarily see eye to eye. Uh, you know, when you go up to Washington D.C., you get all this help. Sometimes it's not as helpful as you really want it to be. My first comms director, we were talking about Second Amendment rights things and the battle that was going on, and he said, you know, Mr. Meadows, you ought to talk about that. I bet you have a gun. <laughs> and I said, a gun? <laughs> uh, we would have a hard time making a decision on which one to choose in 30 or 40 minutes. So, uh, you know, it's... Uh, it's what it's all about. But many of you understand, if you're a shooter, that occasionally what happens is, is if you're going out shooting, that you may be shooting a shotgun and occasionally you'll pull the trigger and nothing happens. You, you, have, a, you have a dud. <laughs> now you have a choice there when you're shooting that you can either continue to pull the trigger, hoping that that same shell fires, which normally it, it doesn't happen. Or you can open the shotgun and eject the shell and put in a new one. Well, I'm here today to tell you that a few of you have duds as members of Congress. It's time to eject the shell. But I also am here to, today to tell you that Twitter and social media has changed the way that we do politics. And when you're involved there, you start to make a difference because what happens is, is we're faced with the reality of having to answer questions that sometimes we don't want to answer. Because Washington, D.C. is famous for show votes, aren't they? Yeah. They're famous for votes that say they stand for something else, knowing that they're not going to go anywhere, knowing that perhaps even if we're voting to defund Planned Parenthood, we know that it's not going to be defunded, and yet we're going to be able to pound our chest. It is time that our votes right. represent real action and make a difference. I also believe that it is time that we have a change in leadership. heartfelt, genuine thank you to so many in this room. Many of you whom, whom uh, I don't know on a first name basis like 
uh, the folks over to my right. It's interesting they're over to my right. You know, <laughs> wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be good? Yeah. So many of you have called my office, followed us on Facebook or Twitter, have encouraged me in this time because when we put in the resolution to vacate the chair, the headline was, it's an army of one. <laughs> now little did they know <laughs> that maybe in Washington, D.C. it was an army of one, but across America it was an army of millions and millions and millions of people. <laughs> These will be difficult days ahead for me. They're coming after me. Uh, in fact, when I came in, you, you may have noticed there's a few holes in my back. Uh, those are the people who like me. The rest of them shoot at the front. Uh, and and these, are, these could be potentially difficult days. But this is not about me. It's not even about you. It's about our country. Yes. It's about taking back America. And somebody asked me the other day, with all the things that are coming your way and all the difficulty that you're facing, you know, what do you think about that? And I said, you have to put that in perspective. You have to think about all the unbelievable sacrifices that have been made by our military men and women who have fought and died for our country. You have to think about that. You have to think about, truly think about, the people that each and every day put their, their families on hold, their lives on hold, and they serve their communities with our law enforcement, our first responders. You know, we need to stand by them because they're taking a real shot right now, too. But for me, but for me when I look at it, the biggest aspect of that is, is when you think a veteran who has come home, who may be missing a limb, or a leg, or some other kind of injury, sometimes internal injuries that you can't see on the outside that they battle with each and every day. What I'm facing is nothing compared to what they face. And we must remember that. We must remember that. And so I'll close with, with this and then open it up whatever time we have remaining with a question, and, and I apologize to some of the folks over to my right because they've heard this story a long time ago. When we think of facing trials, we can go through all of history and realize that we have faced impossible odds. Each and every day we've faced impossible odds, and yet we have been able to conquer those and live in the greatest country in the world. But if you look back to August of 1776, when George Washington was there fighting the most powerful military and navy in the world in that particular time, the story goes like this, is there he was faced with certain annihilation at the river. And he decided that what he was going to do with the 9,000 troops is get them to the other side so that they could fight another day. And so indeed they embarked on that during night to move each one of those soldiers boat by boat to the other side of the river so they, they could fight. Now the interesting thing is as dawn would come, only 4,500 had made it to the other side. They faced unbelievable uncertainty because now at half strength, they knew that they would be eliminated. And yet what happened, and history shows us that an unbelievable fog came in over that particular time to, to make it still as if it were dark. And they were able to take boat by boat to the other side of that river until all 9,000 had made it to the other side. Yeah. And as that last boat got there, the fog started to rise. Now some people call it fate, most call it the hand of God. Yeah. But what I am here to tell you, what I am 
here to tell you today is that each one of you are going boat by boat to the other side. But I'm also here to tell you that a fog is rising. It is rising across this great land. And when it is gone, the sun will come back and we will have our country back. God bless you. Thank you so much.